proud to be helping the Free Star Rangers. Helga says I spend too much time at my terminal. He's probably right. Hey there, Deputy. Good, good. If you ask me, I don't think they stand a chance. You're like an Ashta creeping. So, did you get any more of those encrypted slates? Oh, come to daddy, you. S you go stalk your prey and leave the rest to me, deputy. Come here, deputy. Take a seat. Grab a chair. While you've been in the field, we've had more reports about farmers being threatened and attacked. Unfortunately, some didn't survive. It's worse. How's your investigation proceeding? That's assuming he finds something useful. Otherwise, you'll be no better off than when you started. Let's move on. I asked the other rangers to share their opinions of you. We'll start with Ranger Callow in Hopetown. She was grateful for your timely arrival, and impressed you had the guts to take on those pirates. Nia says you were respectful with Ron Hope and didn't push too hard. That shows me you were listening when I said to go easy on him. I can understand that. He can be uncompromising, but he looks after his people. Let's continue. We've got a detailed report from Ranger Price about your recent visit to Neon. He said you met an informant who asked for your help, but you talked him out of it. Use you? <laughs> the way I hear it, he was fearing for his life and looking for help. You don't get to ignore your duty when it's inconvenient. That's the right way to think about it. You definitely went above and beyond, and the Marshal and I thank you for that. You got results, and that's what matters most. Price was impressed by that. Excuse me. Ranger McMillan praised what she called your uncommon bravery and dedication. She said you took on the Red Mile so you could get a meeting with Marco Graziani. Sounds like you're starting to understand what it means to be a Free Star Ranger. So what happened with Marco? I doubt he gave you that slate out of the kindness of his heart. I suppose underestimating you was his last mistake. Damn. I thought if anyone could see reason, it'd be Marco. What about Maya Cruz? Her loyalty to Hull and the 1st Cavalry was stronger than most. I guess I'd want the same thing if I were in her place. Excuse me, Marshal? Not now, Alex. We're in a meeting here. I know, but this is important. I've done it. I've cracked the encryption on the slates. Now, I don't know exactly where the first are headquartered, but there are references to a place called the Factory. The Factory? That was our nickname for the main facility where the mechs were manufactured. Under the terms of the peace treaty, they shut all the mech factories down right after the war. But they didn't destroy them. At least not all of them. The facility was on Arcturus too. It could be a dead end, but if it's not, then you'd better be ready for a fight. Not everyone gets to say they were.
find this area aesthetically pleasing.
I'm a man of action. I've got no use for lies. So when I tell you that you're being manipulated, you know I'm telling the truth. Someone there? You think the Council of Governors really cares about anything but themselves? They're greedy and corrupt.
will save your life. Cavalry was the greatest fighting force the Freestar Collective has ever seen. At the Battle of Mira, the 1st Cavalry was destroyed. Why? Because the generals got scared and asked for a truce. I've got no sympathy for cowards, or for the people who put them in power. I've also got no sympathy for those who do their bidding. And this means you.
travel safely.
It is a fact that my firepower exceeds yours. to remain hostile towards us.
survive this encounter.
I am uncertain why you believe this conflict with us was advisable.
My firepower exceeds yours.
you just took on some of the best mercenaries in the Freestar Collective and cut right through them. <clears throat> if we'd have had more like you in the war, we could have planted our flag in New Atlantis. You fought because you had to, and you fought well. Don't apologize for that. More importantly, you survived. Most soldiers don't. I know, because I'm the one who led them to their death. You don't know what it's like to look around and see the faces of warriors who trusted you to lead them as they die screaming. I watched brave men and women torn, limp, I saw mech pilots cooked alive in their cockpits as their machines burned. Those deaths didn't have to be meaningless. But spineless leaders gave up on us, even when victory was within our grasp. You really want to know? Because you might not like the answer. Last chance, deputy. You can walk away right now and remain blissfully ignorant. But if you still want the truth, <laughs> I'll shatter that illusion for you. <laughs> Not long after I started the first, I was contacted by a man who said he represented someone wealthy and influential. <laughs> I refused to work for a shadow client, so he agreed to set up a meeting. Imagine my surprise when Ron Hope showed up. He offered me a lucrative contract to take possession of certain farms throughout Freestar space. Sure I did. The money was good, but the payback was the real reward. If I could avenge my men, make some credits, and eventually expose a member of the Council, well, <laughs> that, that, my friend, is my definition of justice. You think I've lost? Is that it? You go find Ron Hope, and you can deal out whatever justice you do your job, and I get one last piece of vengeance against the camp. I'm gonna make this easy for you, deputy. I'm gonna die the way I lived. Weapon in hand, no compromise, no fear. But first, here, take this. Use it to cut out the weakness rotting at the heart of the Freestar Collective. When the next war comes, <laughs> and it will come, the Collective needs to be strong. Now my unit's waiting for me, and I'm gonna report for duty one last time. Goodbye. Using that power in proximity to other humans may induce fainting from shock.
I can't wait to head up to the eye again. addition to the family. Sarah was just regaling us with a story involving her and Vladimir that is clearly 100% fabricated. Are you calling me a liar, country? 
No, ma'am. <laughs> wouldn't dream of it. At this point, we've all got stories that sound made up. Lucky that all of us here know they're true. Some of our stories are a bit weirder than others, you got to admit. Okay, sure, but it's not a contest, Barrett. None of us thought we'd end up here like this. I was sure I'd have a nice, quiet, boring career in Mast. I kind of figured I'd just keep securing religious relics. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear that. Did you say securing or uh, stealing? You're never gonna let it go, are you? <laughs> you should know by now that is not how Walter operates. He never lets anything go. It's gotten him this far. Now, Andresia, I'm sure your answer would be something about the life of a smuggler. Am I right? It was perhaps not my plan, but my options were limited. Hey, no judgment here. In addition to weird stories, I think we've all done a few things we're not proud of. And that is one contest Barrett would definitely win. What about you? I know you were kind of thrown into all this. Discovered an artifact and tussled with pirates all on his first day. No big deal, right? I think we've all said, or at least thought, something similar. Too right. We're all here for a reason, and a damn good one. That's why we're all here. Even as this gets weirder and weirder. It's all important. Probably the most important thing there is. And soon, we're gonna understand what it all means. The optimism in this room right now could power all of New Atlantis. I love it. We have an incredibly capable group of people here. We have a path to follow, and we're going to see where it leads. We're going to figure out what this all means, and look after each other along the way. No matter what happens, we're all in this together. I'll drink to that. This is all exciting, but there's really a lot of pressure on us, isn't there? We have to get this right. See you on the eye. I'll be heading to the eye to assist momentarily. Anything that gets us closer to more artifacts is a good idea in my book. It's good to be checking in on Vladimir. We don't visit often enough. I'll be heading to the Eye to assist momentarily. Good to be checking Sounds like Vladimir Vladimir. could use our help on the we station. Don't visit often enough. I don't want to hear any complaints. Pardon? Keep an eye on your valuables. Ron Hope knows his stuff. Dust except for the factory.
learn, Burkett. We set some em vicious quotas. You met every one of them. Well, I won't pretend it was easy, but everyone pulled together and we got it done. I'll let you share the good news, whenever and however you like. Thanks. I appreciate that. Something more you need? Good to see you again. Well, I've just received a report from the Marshal about your progress. He said you had a promising lead on the mercenaries who stole my ship. I trust you're here with good news. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> You'd better have a damn good explanation for this. That's one hell of an accusation. Don't presume to question me. That two-faced bastard kept this. Oh, I suppose. This is his revenge against the Council of Governors for what happened during... <laughs> I'm impressed, Deputy. It's clear you have a... Bright future. What's going on? What is this about, Mr. Hope? Nothing that concerns you, Burgett. In fact, why don't you make yourself scarce? I think I'd like to hear what the deputy has to say. Just hear me out. And you'll see. I had a good reason. The truth is, we've been falling behind the competition. <laughs> Sign, a few years ago, I began to diversify. We developed an experimental fertilizer. <laughs> and it failed utterly. I was prepared to write the whole thing off. When we made a discovery that changed everything, turns out, our fertilizer was transforming the soil, bolstering its mineral content tenfold. Mining is expensive, and so is the cost of raw materials. My mineral enriching fertilizer solves several problems at once. The farmers provide free manual labor, and once the land is ready, we move in to extract and process the soil. Look around you. Everyone in this building, in this town, is depending on me. I provide the jobs that put food on their tables. The fact is, the business hasn't been doing well lately. These people work hard for me. I cannot, I will not let them down. I never intended for anyone to be hurt. I told Hull to buy the land, not take it by force. Unfortunately. Farmers can be stubborn folk. I can't believe what I'm hearing. How could you do something so... so awful to... Not another word out of you, Burgett! I can take your job. And more. We'll discuss this later. In any case, I suppose the gig is up. I give you my word that I'll call off the operation and... Return the land to its rightful owners. Like I said, I give you my word. Besides, the work is just about done. With that resolved, 
Let's talk about you. As a member of the Council of Governors, I'm authorized to award you a substantial bonus. And of course, we'll both agree to forget about my little cost-cutting endeavor. Of course you do, but first, take a moment to consider the big picture. I'll do what's necessary to protect my company. If you tell anyone about this, you're risking their livelihoods. Do you really want to put all these people out of work? Justice can be complicated, Debbie. Sometimes the cost of exacting justice is greater than the cost of doing nothing. I'll make myself very plain. I won't let you jeopardize my reputation. If that means you suffer an unfortunate incident at that, I'm important! You're you're not actually threatening to attack a Freestar Ranger, are you? You just threaten a member of the Council of Governors. On my authority, you're stripped of rank, declared an outlaw. Guards!
keep it holstered. Workers like to play hard. to have you killed. I don't understand. Mr. Hope always seemed like such a good person. But everything he said about the farmers and hiring those mercenaries, it was so awful. The first part is true. He always looked out for us, for his employees. I know what I just heard and saw, but he was a friend. No, he was more like a father. And now he's you, you killed him. Nobody should ever want that. <sighs> what happens to us now? That's... that would be... Elana. Elana Nwankwo. She seems pretty capable. I guess we'll have to figure things out. Welcome to the rock. You're back. Good to see you back safe. What's the word on the mech factory? Damn, you've got guts of steel. Did you find out why the first was taking over farms? What? Ron Hope? That's one hell of an accusation, Deputy. Are you really that surprised? Hope's always had a reputation as a man who'd do anything to succeed. He's on the damn council, Emma. So he can make laws favorable to his business interests. Sure, he's known to look after his people, but do you really think he gives a damn about some farmers on Montara Luna? Did Hope explain his motives at all? That has a familiar ring to it. I recall hearing about some Hope Tech initiative to help farmers. At the time, I just figured it was a PR stunt. Seems a little more sinister now. Please, tell me you've got some evidence to back up these extraordinary claims. All right, let's see what you've got. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, this is pretty damning. 
Especially this last bit about destroying the slate. And you confronted Hope about this? Damn. This is going to send shockwaves throughout the Free Star Collective. If the people can't trust their leaders, anarchy could follow. Have a little faith, Daniel. We're not the United Colonies. One bad apple won't spoil the whole damn barrel. Easy for you to say. You ain't the marshal. Not yet, but you ain't gonna live forever, old man. While we've got you here, there's one last piece of business to take care of. Emma, would you please? With pleasure, Marshal. When you first joined us, I told you that you'd undergo an evaluation process. There's one thing left to do. A simple question. Do you feel ready to wear the badge of a full-fledged Freestar Ranger? Good. Duty and honor are the backbone of the Freestar Rangers. Marshal, I approve the deputy for advancement to the rank of Ranger. Thank you, Ranger Wilcox. In your time serving as a deputy, you've shown exceptional courage, fearless tenacity, and a high regard for the safety of our citizens. By the authority granted to me by the Council of Governors, I hereby promote you to the rank of Ranger. Here's your badge. Wear it with pride. But don't forget the solemn responsibility it represents. I know you will, Ranger. Let's hear it for our new Ranger. Woo! Way to go. Great job, Ranger! What can I get you? Staying out of trouble? Well, whatever gets you through the day. I've had more than my fill of it for this lifetime. Things here have been... Well, they're better. The Isis thought a bit between me and Davis. We'll probably never be friends, but at least we're on speaking terms now. I think he finally appreciates the value of my research. Yeah, we're much better as a team, even if it is a cautiously engaged one. In fact, speaking of Davis, I have to confess, I'm a little worried about him. In analyzing the recent data, I've isolated readings suggesting that someone is making patrols far more often than in the recent past. I don't have any direct evidence, but I know it's Davis. It's gotta be. I'm worried that everything I've inadvertently put him through is kind of, I don't know, pushed him over the edge, or at least a little too close to it. No, he's not. He's out there at least four and a half times as frequently. There's something else going on. I'm better with statistics and circuits than I am with people. I've already made a mess of this situation. Do you think you could go speak to him? If nothing else, it would ease my conscience.
Why is it every time I see your face, I bet a headache's gonna follow shortly after? Can't say I'm surprised. So what can I do for you? Right to the point then. Ah, that woman, I swear. Even though we've smoothed over most of the rough spots, she still manages to strike a nerve without even trying. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. When we were out there and we found that robot, obviously that threw me for a loop. Still can't believe one of my own people would pull a stunt like that in danger. But the more I thought about it, that whole episode doesn't account for some of the tracks I saw out there. Too large, too spread out. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. If there's a bigger Ashta out there, Something meaner than what we've seen so far? I have to know. I tell you what, if you and Kiona are worried, why don't you just come with me then? I'll give you a chance to gear up if you need it. All right. You know, Kiona showed me her data. She's a clever kid. She's got a lot of things figured out. I think we can make some real improvements in the future. Not sure she if had a couple sets of data space, that she thought were erroneous or something. But it seems to me that might not be. Bigger, faster, Ashta sounds like it matches up with the tracks I've seen. But I tell you, I'm hoping she's right. And it's just a glitch. And uh, no need to tell her I said that. Wouldn't want it going to her head. All right, here we are. Let's head. This way. I remember a story from the first time I was here. I had totally forgotten about it till this. Every so often we get independent types who think that they can succeed where everyone else can fail. Some of them stride off into the wilderness, certain that they're going to make more credits than anyone in history. Mining, botany stuff, whatever. Warners just don't get through to them. Most of them don't come back. But this one time, Miner from some corporation or other, he drags himself back into the city bloody and half dead. Like he seen the ash as big as a house out there. The older guys all said he was delirious. To me, well, I would do with anything just listen to him. Now, though, I'm wondering if maybe it wasn't just blood loss and the heat stroke. Maybe he really did see something. Maybe I should have come out here a long time ago. Shit, that's gotta be... Yeah. No matter what happens, you make it back to the city and tell them about this. You hear me? I didn't think we were going to make it through that. If you hadn't been with me, no way I'd be standing right now. I mean, it does and it doesn't, you know? We got out alive this one time. That's good. This ain't going to be the last time we have to deal with this. Now that we know these things are out here, we need to track them and keep them out of populated areas. And that plan is going to need everybody. So, I'm gonna swallow my pride a bit here and ask you to go tell Keone what we found. Let her know that her data wasn't an error and that she needs to focus on it. Oh, don't worry about me. Thanks again for saving my ass. Your 
your hand. That was the granddad of all Ashta there. But Ashta Alphas are real, and we got the corpse to prove it. If we could track... So, what happened? Really? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't trust it. You know, I was really hitting a point where I was starting to think maybe this was all a mistake. Davis was so certain they had everything under control. Yeah, you're right. If anything, this has proven I should trust my instincts. I need to get to work on this immediately. But while I've been sitting around, I whipped up a little something for you. I thought it was funny. <sighs> now that I'm giving it to you, I'm hoping it's not in really poor taste. 